as the White House pushes phase two of tax cuts, someone here says it is time to cut to the chase and make them permanent. Here's why. I am very grateful for the bonus when the college gave it to us. And I put mine in savings for my retirement. Recently, I noticed an increased amount of my take-home pay. What that means for me personally is an opportunity to reinvest or invest in my daughter's college education. I have a son who's almost two years old who recently had to have surgery for a hernia, and I was able to take that bonus and put that towards the deductibles for that and help me and my family get ahead. Joining me now, Fox News contributors John Layfield and Gary B. Smith, along with Independent Journal Review's Aaron McPike and Democratic strategist Chuck Rocha. It's like old home week. <laughs> Or sun Good Saturday. Morning. How about that? Yeah, get on it. Hey, John, you say make t it's time to make these tax cuts permanent. Yes, it is. Look, we're at about 19% of GDP, according to tax revenue that's going to the Treasury right now. That is about all the market can take. That is about all the economy can take. Now is the time, if you're going to do this, to do this. The deficits that we're experiencing right now have nothing to do with these tax cuts. The overall deficits. People are going to get on me for, the, for saying that. But we went from $2.1 trillion coming in the tax Treasury under President Obama to $3.2 trillion during that time. 50% gain. We're still running trillion dollar deficits. These deficits have to do with reckless politicians spending money like they're drunken sailors. The tax cuts need to be made permanent. That's a separate issue. Gary B., what do you say? I totally agree. In fact, I think taxes should be even lower for a variety of reasons. Number one is, you know, Lauren said in the previous segment the uh, deficit's now at uh, $21 trillion. Some people want more government revenue. It's just the opposite. The government spends the money ineffectively, and it needs to go on a diet. We need to start redefining what the role of government is. Some are starting to think we're some big socialist country where the government is there as a nanny to redistribute all the money people make so everyone's at the same level. That's not what made America great. The other reason is that it's the people's money. Like I said, you know, just before, the people spend it much more effectively and efficiently than the government. We've seen any number of government projects where you give the, the, uh, uh, the government a dollar, it manages to fritter it away with some silly project that's over budget and over time. It's the fairest thing to do. Put the government on a diet, redefine what the government should do, and let the people keep their money. Chuck, you're a big old Democrat, but I know you like that tax cut, but not one Democrat voted for the tax cuts, and trying to make them permanent, which the Republicans do plan to do, is a way to hold their feet to the fire coming up on those midterms and say, you know what, you keep telling that fib about the Republicans raised your taxes. Well, yeah, because the individual tax cuts expire after 2025, but now this is, this is a put up or shut up moment for Democrats. Well, I think as a Democrat, we should make individual taxes lower for people. And I'll go on the record saying that. I don't think that's our problem. To John's point about the deficits, the problem is if you're a corporate American, corporate America got their rates reduced. But after your lawyers get through with all the loopholes and the effective tax rate for corporations, it gets much, much less. And that's fine. I want corporations to hire people and stuff. But it's still not fair compared to the individual. But yes, we should make the individuals permanent. And one fact for you is Republicans aren't running on this right now. And if they do go into phase two, Maybe they will use this as an Achilles heel to actually try to make inroads into the middle class like they lost in Pennsylvania 18, not using this narrative. Chuck, before we move on to Aaron, can you give me a list of names of Democratic congressmen or senators on the Democratic side who might actually vote to make the tax cuts permanent for individuals? I think, as long as, I think as long as Democrats are winning elections and using this narrative because what John and me talk about all the time, politics is getting in the, in the way of common sense. <laughs> Aaron, but I will say this about the Republicans. This making these individual tax cuts permanent cost at least half a trillion dollars, but they get in their own way by that dumb budget that they passed, which raised, you know, it's an extra $300 billion over two years. It takes our annual budget deficit to a trillion dollars right. in a few years. So again, when you don't know how to cut spending or at least rein it in in some way, then you're your own worst enemy. Yeah, look, there's not a chance that this is going to happen this year to throw some cold water 
all over it. Uh, not only are we talking about budgets, but they still have to fund the government. There still has to be a DACA fix. And look, what you're going to see Democrats start to campaign on is that this is a culture of chaos and corruption going on in Washington right now between the White House and the Republicans on Capitol Hill. There is just no chance it happens. It's just an election year gambit. There's no proposal yet. And I don't think we're going to see any movement on this anytime soon. But John, that that just seems foolish because again, it comes down to are people being are able to keep more of their own money. And you have 90% of people who are going to see higher paychecks this year. Those those tax cuts started kicking in in February. That's what people care about. That's what people will feel and see going into November. Yeah, and to my my good friend Chuck's point about the Democrats not supporting the tax cuts. It's, it's very similar to Republicans not supporting Obamacare or even dealing with it. You're dealing with something that was going to affect that big a part of the economy, and it was 100% partisan. The only thing bipartisan in D.C. right now is incompetence. These guys are absolute idiots. We, we doubled the budget under, under, we doubled the deficit under President Bush. We doubled it again under President Obama. We, we cannot afford, the easiest to see financial crisis in the history of the world is American debt. It's going to take a while for it to manifest itself, but we've got to do something about this exploding debt. But Gary B is now the time again you can use this as a positive or a negative to make these tax cuts permanent because we clearly see an economy that is picking up steam consumer confidence at a 14 year high and that's even higher among lower income Americans you have job creation in the first two months of this year running at 276,000 jobs on average that's up from that 181,000 just last year again by many indicators this is an economy that's gaining steam and we can thank in part those tax cuts absolutely you know Dagan the whole point is and we've seen this time and time again when you allow people to keep more of their money not just give them back a tax rebate that's silliness when you lower the marginal rates people say my gosh I'm freed up I can spend it on what I think is effective you know we've gotten this view somehow you know it should be like we live in a, a, a condo co-op all we ask the, the co-op to do is make sure they have security you know around the thing make sure our landscaping is good we have electricity and we have water coming in instead we're starting to think of the condo co-op as a way to to minimize everyone's pain spread the wealth that's not the whole point when we get back to that we've seen these tax cuts time and time again under kennedy under uh, uh, bush under reagan and now uh, um, under trump the benefits of it let's make it permanent let's build on something positive as you say Chuck, I'm going to give you a quick final word. I know you're slapping some of that tax cut money down at the uh, roulette table. I am live in Las Vegas, just like Gary B. Say, the freedom to be able to take my tax cut and invest it into good things like March Madness and basketball with my buddies out here while exactly. I drink some good whiskey is a good thing for me. You get an amen and a hallelujah from me, Chuck. Good to see Thanks, you. Everybody. Aaron McPike, Chuck Rocha, John Layfield, and Gary B. Smith. I miss you guys. Absolutely.